OK, cool. All right, once again, good good morning, good afternoon from wherever you're joining us, and I hope you are keeping safe and um, you are well. Welcome to the second part of our BP enablement webinar where we are looking at the cash management and the improvements that have been done. And today we are going to look at the bank statement reconciliation enhancement. So we're going to, to look at the cash, um, the, the, the cash book, uh, bank statement reconciliation, specifically to the enhancements that have been done. And um, we will have an opportunity to go through a demo, um, all things being equal, to show you those uh, enhancements. And then, like always, um, a few ground rules. Uh, always mute your, your line. And then also, if you feel like you have got a question, you feel you need some clarity, you can also raise your hand. Um, you can see the icons right at the top there. You can, if you feel um, you want to, to raise a question, feel free to raise a hand and um, my colleagues will also be able to, to answer you. And then also feel free to make use of the chat uh, where, we, where you can put in your questions, suggestions, comments, and we will endeavor to answer that. At the end of um, the session, we will have um, a question and answer where we will answer those questions, some of the questions, and then whatever we uh, will not be able to answer during this presentation, we will carry it over and present it in uh, present it uh, on our um, social platforms, mainly the Sage City and YouTube channel. Okay, so that's uh, basically it in terms of uh, what we need to do. Okay, let's get started. Okay, just a sec. Oh. Okay, just get this guy going. Okay, just okay. Without wasting much time, let's look at our agenda. So we're gonna do the introduction, and then um, we'll look at the setup uh, and the transaction import, transaction management, and reconciliation, and then we'll go into the demo like I indicated earlier on. And today we specifically we're looking at the bank um, bank statement import and reconciliation. So um, what we have been focusing on uh, on the cash management, as you as, as some of you are aware, we didn't have um, the cash book uh, functionality uh, in X3, and for our region we had to res uh, resort to an add-on that we developed to actually do the functions that we uh, the businesses uh, actually were looking for. So all those functions now we are slowly taking them in from the add-on and bringing them into the core of um, X3. And you notice that from um, uh, version 12 release um, of 2020 release four, quite a number of things have actually been done towards achieving this. So. The main drivers basically where we are focusing on uh, improving is basically on the bank file format designer, where we are looking at inbound transactions and making sure that we can actually uh, meet different requirements uh, for the bank file uh, inputs and to make it customizable as much as possible. And then we're also looking at the automatic bank reconciliations and to automate the process so that we actually make it easy to use and easy and simple to use uh, so that it should not be a showstopper or a cumbersome process. And then also the other vision that we are looking on 
on the bank feeds is automated transaction posting and matching and where we will have the ability to uh, create transactions that are on the statement and then they'll be automatically be created or added to our system if they don't exist so those are some of the visions that we are actually working on and we'll see some of this functionality being imp improved and uh, enhanced in the new re upcoming releases. So that's basically the vision that uh, that we are looking at at those three, uh, which is based, namely bank format designer, automated bank conciliations, and automated uh, transaction posting. Okay, let's look at some of the improvements that have been done. Okay, so we some of these things may not be new to you. Uh, we may have mentioned them in the last presentation uh, last month, or you have already come across them. Uh, on the advanced bank statements, there are improvements on the input formats where we have actually included the CSV. We mentioned this last time, and support of different formats uh, that are coming out. So that's part of the improvements that we have been done on the bank, advanced bank statement. And as I mentioned, this is something that is evolving, it's really changing and more and more uh, features have been added on. And also another improvement that is uh, or an enhancement uh, on the bank reconciliation screen. Remember, we used to have the standard or the classic screen where with the function uh, RAP ban, where you only had one screen with all the transactions that are coming from the bank and transactions also that are coming from uh, the system were all in one screen. But um, with the new improvements now, we now have the split table display and this can be accessed using the function uh, RAP band two. So similar, uh, same, um, sim uh, the look and feel is different. The the band two allows you to, to see two sides, one, uh, the cash book on your left uh, sorry, your bank statement on your left, uh, and then the um, the cash book uh, the cash book on your on your right. So the, the basically you've got two grids side by side layout with the bank reconciliation um, split table display, and then also some some uh, the bank uh, fees ability to enter manual payment adjustments. Uh, this can actually be uh, uh, done in the in the process bank uh, transaction function. Uh, when you can actually account for the bank fees related to check payments. So these are some of the improvements that have been done and more improvements are coming in new releases. Okay, uh, let's move on. So without wasting much of your time, I want us to just um, um, bear with me as I just set up my demo. So we're just going to show you some of the things that have been done and then we dive, uh, we dive, we dive in into the demo. Uh, so there will be more practical things that um, uh, that I will be showing you and my colleagues also will also chip in there and then we'll share the, um, uh, we'll share some of the improvements. And uh, this is a, basically a takeaway from the last presentation where people felt that they needed to see more of the system and less uh, talking. So we're taking uh, from the feedback that we got from the last presentation. OK, so let me just end my slide here and then go into X3. And then I'm using um, release uh release one of 2021 that's where uh this uh, presentation is based on so also something that i just want to i'll be using uh, a process uh that uh, that we have developed thanks to my colleagues in pre-sales alfred but where i will be taking most of my um uh my presentation is going to come from this uh, classic menu under the cash book where we are going to look at the setup and then we'll go into uh, the input settings um, banks transaction management uh, bank transactions import and so forth so that's where i'm going to be taking uh, my uh, uh, most of my my, my 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 presentation or where i'm going to base my presentation from okay so this is our bank reconciliation process so we're going to look at the settings or the setup. And then from the setup, we'll look at uh, the format segments, where, where we are now, how it was before, and then 
we'll actually go into looking at our bank statements. We've got a mock bank statement file that we're going to, to use to import. And then we're going to do the reconciliation and then go into, before we do the reconciliation, we're going to go into bank transaction management and then bank reconciliation statement. And if the time permitting, we will also discuss other things as well. So if we look at the settings, so for this presentation, we are going to be looking uh, at um, uh, the MT940 set, uh, setup. Like I said, there are different formats that are available, but we today we're going to, to focus on the MT940. And I'll just um, open this. And just to explain some of the things that you may be familiar with, we already had the standard, uh, the flow type standard, and the new uh, functionality that has been added now, we now have the uh, reconciliation only or the post-validation transfer. So you can actually, as you set up your, your bank import settings, you can actually set it to standard or you can set it to reconciliation only. When you set it up to reconciliation only, that means you, you don't want to be creating or introducing new transactions into the system. Uh, you just want to reconcile. So your bank statement, you import, and then you reconcile. But when you set it up to post-validation transfer, you've got the option to create new transaction and also to do a reconciliation. And then under the accounting uh, block, you can also, if you set your post-validation transfer, you can also suppress um, immediate posting of transactions and also create, you can also create reconciliation. So I'm, uh, for this presentation, I'm going to use the post-validation transfer and also suppress um, with suppress inter intermediate uh, posting and I'm going to create reconciliation. So that's basically what we are going to use um, in this presentation. And if you also want, if you wanted to, uh, to create transactions, you can also have the ability to enter um, the account number where the new transaction is going to be posted to and, and so forth. But for this presentation, I'm just going to use the post validation uh, transfer. Okay, so. That's my part of one uh, of the setup. This is what I need to, to have uh, set up to define my company, my bank, and um, the file format that I'm going to use and the payment entry type. Okay, so let's go back to our process. So that's part of the setup. And then under setup, you can also put um, define items or uh, that appear on your statement so that you can preset them so that you don't have to, to, to always go back to refer to them. So under um, search term list, you can also add, so in my example, I've created bank charges, and then this is where it is going to be recognized and the account that is going to be used. Obviously uh, with this, you need to have um, define your address and give a description. So that's also part of my setup um, that you go and um, set up. You don't, okay, I'm not going to cover all the setups that are required. Obviously, there are quite a number of setups that um, you need to look at uh, because of time limitations. You also, if you are going to go into setups, you also now need to go and um, define the invoice number definition, the BP number definition, and so forth. So I'm just picking up some of the uh, key things that you need to include in your setups. Okay. So that's um, on setups. And then the different formats, I think I've mentioned this before, that um, we are evolving uh, in terms of the formats that we can actually uh, support. So the, we, today we are looking at M MT940. I think sometime last year, if you remember, for the other guys who managed to attend, Mkumelin did introduce the MT940 uh, before. So we're bringing it back because of the additional functionality or enhancement that have come uh, since that time. So we that's why we bring in MT940 as well. These other formats are also supported. And we, we also mentioned that uh, we can also now support uh, CSV files and so forth. So under format segments, these are the 
uh, definitions that are supported. Uh, you can see the path there. All these are supported, but we're not going to go into each and every one. But uh, we today we're just focusing on the MT nine forty. Okay, so you know, as the process or the or the system actually uh, evolve, we can look at. Uh, when I mentioned that uh, we now have uh, some of the in, uh, improvements that we, we now have the two functions uh, of the split table display. So when we use the function R RAP ban, you get this classic screen. So this is what, um, sorry, uh, sorry, not for the classic screen, but before uh, before we we used to have this function which is the bank statement entry you were able to take or to import or to do to enter your bank statement manually using uh, the screen so this functionality is still there you can enter your bank statement you create a um, new transaction you select your bank and then you'll be able to enter your transactions so this functionality is still there you can manually create your bank statement if you still want to take that route, but we've actually automated it and allowed us to have the ability to import uh, the bank statement. So that's the bank entry, uh, bank statement entry function is still there. So if you want to go through that route, you can still do that. But we have improved this system. Now you have the ability to actually uh, import the statement. So before we actually get to the uh, statement import, um, we have got our, you need to have your file obviously, and you choose the format that you want your file to come in, whether it's fixed, uh, it's a fixed uh, length file or it's a CSV and so forth, uh, like I mentioned on the format segments. So for this, uh, we've created a, a dummy file that we're going to use to import. I'll just quickly show you my file. Maybe some people may recognize it, may be coming. That's the file that I'm going to import. Okay. And then we come to the bank, uh, bank statement import. So the import is coming from, uh, based on the setup that I've done of the MT940 file. So I'll choose the file that I created. So there's the file that I created in the setups. And that's my bank that I'm going to import. And then the, based on my setup, it's going to, the flow type is going to be post validation transfer. And then I click OK. Go and select my bank statement. And then accept. OK, I've used this bank statement before, so I get this uh, warning message. Then I'll click OK. OK, so the warning that is there is just complaining about the account number uh, that it is not assigned to the bank. If I wanted to go and just uh, put that account number, then I'll just go in and put the account number in my banking setup. So it's not really a showstopper. Uh, OK, for um, some guys will probably want to know where would I go and set it up. I can quickly just go. You go into your um, common data and then uh, on the bank's bank account, then you put specify the bank account. So that's where you do that. OK, so our statement has been imported. You can see that there are 10 transactions successfully imported. OK, let's go back and see how things are looking. So we have we have done the bank statement import, and you can also import more than once. It is possible that for some reason or what you can import it more than once, and your file can also have different uh, multi currency is supported as well. So let's go to uh, bank transaction management, and as you can see under the screen, this is my statement that I just um, imported right at the top there, and let's go to my date the file name, the currency. OK, I didn't specify a site. It's not a showstopper, so I'll just go up here on. Uh, as you can see, it's not meshed. 
if it is made and for some reason I discover that there's something that I needed to do, you can always go and unmatch uh, here. You can just come and, for example, undo matching. OK, so let's go to this file. And then I can display to see what has been imported. Uh, on the, so the 10 items that were imported, that's my transactions there, my bank, the, the amounts and so forth. So that's basically the start balance there on my bank statement. So that has been uh, imported. Okay. So again, select process bank statements. And on this screen, just to explain the screen. You have your, your, your start balance, your dates, uh, your bank, and so forth. So we start from um, match statement. And then it opens up our transactions on the left list. From the um, statement, and then if there are any open item, I uh, open open items here, you can actually select and match them uh, from this screen. Or you can also do undo matching. You can do enter a manual entry. Remember in my introduction, I said you can also enter a manual entry as well as part of the enhancement and all these other select open items, select payments, uh, complete, complete transactions on all the actions are actually on my right list. So after opening this, I want to validate my statement. And then I click OK. So basically, I get my log. The log basically is just um, the 10 lines, the 10 items that I had uh, that, uh, that it is created all these transactions, the reconciliation. So I'm ready to reconcile my uh, my statement. OK. So we have done our bank transaction management. So in the bank transaction management, if I also had transactions that if I wanted to create new transactions in my setup, remember I suppressed it not to create new transactions. In the bank transactions management, that's where also we will process new transactions that are on the bank statement, but not yet on uh, not yet on my uh, on, on, on the bank statement, but not yet in the system. So that's where we would also process those transactions. Okay, in under the bank transaction management. So let's go to the bank reconciliation now. Choose my bank. That's the bank account and that statement. That is the bank statement, 56 and the statement date. I always put that. Okay. Right, so as you can see, this is my bank reconciliation statement. I'm using the uh, the RIAP ban uh, two, where the um, the screen uh, they've got two grids side by side. So on my left, this is my statement side, and then this is my um, payment side, which is in the system. So if I am doing a matching, then I will be selecting a transaction, for example, from um, if I had uh, some open items or transactions here, I would actually be selecting my transaction from, um, for example, select this transaction. If there was a transaction here, then I would tick there and then basically reconcile. But because I don't have any um, payments to match with my statement, because I think uh, as I was just testing the presentation, I, I had already matched everything that was on, on 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 my system, the ends you find that I don't have any items on underpayments. So that's basically the two um, the two grids um, uh, screen which appear side by side, and you'll be ticking from one side to the other. Compared to the previous uh, function where you only had uh, where you had 
uh, the statement transactions and the payments or the system transactions all in one grid. So now we have the ability to see um, the two sides of uh, the, to the two sides, the bank statement and the system in one view. And then you'll be make you actually be able to to match uh, to make it easy for you to match. Obviously, you've got your running balances at the top, the account balances, bank balances, as you actually um, doing transactions. So that's basically um, the two the new enhancements that have actually been done uh, that we, uh, on the bank statement reconciliation that you now have the ability to actually match and see transactions from. Uh, one side and the other side in one view. Okay. Um, at this point, let's just go back and then, because the whole purpose is not really to do something like a, a, uh, a, a like training, and now we start doing processing a lot of transactions. So that is basically the. Uh, the bank, uh, the bank statement, and I've mentioned also the. I've talked about the bank statement entry uh, that you can still have the ability to actually uh, do transactions manually, and also something that I also want to mention. I uh, did mention that you you have got the ability, depending on your setup, to actually create new transactions, uh, introduce new transactions into X3 from your bank statement and then that's if you if you had selected that setup that's where we go to this option bank statement matching and validation so this is where you would actually go and um, we have seen this screen before you can actually go in there to match and actually validate your transactions okay so if i may come back again Sorry, not the screen. You can see that my uh, my statement is no longer appearing here. It has be actually been matched, and then if I wanted to come in and match, then I can actually unmatch it from from this screen. So that is the process that um, we wanted to share with you to say um, let's look at um, the enhancement that has been done, the splitting of um, the screens and the ability to actually um, match your transaction using the two screens and the, the ability to introduce new transactions into X3. And then um, I don't know if there are any questions. Uh, I'm not monitoring uh, the questions. Are there any questions? Alfred, do you want to uh, come in here? Uh, hi, Andrew. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone uh, who's uh, participating. I just want to to add a moment what uh, what Andrew has mentioned. So, if we recall, there was a screen that uh, that he went on. Uh, Andrew, if you can go to management uh, transaction, bank transaction management, and let's go into that uh, top one that's uh, not matched, and let's go to transactions, the process bank transactions. So, you, so we noticed that here, as uh, Andrew went in, the left list was was empty. There is a way that we can um, make it uh, the statement appear automatically. So this will be by going into our parameter values. Uh, then we go to supervisor chapter, and then under the group, we we select the the left list uh, fill on tunnel. So if we do that. The time that we come to this screen, uh, the statement will be automatically filled. Otherwise, we have to do what Andrew has done by clicking on to match statement. So if uh, we can just go into a DP file. Um, that's what Alfred is uh, talking. We can go into a DP file setup. Um, and we go to the supervisor. From the supervisor, we select uh, the the lists and selections, SEL. Then from there, we have a left list uh, on tunnel. If we can change it to yes, 
Uh, which one is that? Left below is that? below okay. 30, yes. Okay, once we have saved, let's just, uh, we can just exit and come and log in again. So the next time we go to that screen, we'll have the the left list uh, populated. So let's yeah. let's exit let's let's exit out of the system actually. Log out and then log in. And then whilst whilst entry is just uh, uh, exiting the system and logging in. So. Uh, just also to add what what we have experienced is that we we have two options with the new functionality that is to create the statement so that it appears um, side by side what we what would normally do with the with the statement uh, when we are ticking off uh, our traditional bank reconciliation then we have the other option where we where the transactions will then be so instead of it creating the statement it will then look at uh, the matching so when you click on uh, auto matching as we can see now it uh, populates that left list uh, automatically from from the statement so what we what i was saying is that um, if we look at the other option instead of it creating that statement it will then go and create look at what's on the statement and it's not sitting in your cache book then it will create those entries because uh, most of them would have not been assigned to any they will be assigned to that account that 999 that suspends account and then it will then go and uh, create those those journals in your in your in your cash book i think andrew from my side that's what i just wanted to to add okay thanks Thank alfred you. thanks alfred okay so We can uh, just look at uh, open up uh, the Q, 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 Q and A there. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Is there a question? The, I see Farai's hand is up. Okay. Um, oh yes, you can unmute Farai. You can you? Hi, Andrew. Hi, Farai. Yes, uh, Andrew, there's an issue that I brought up uh, last time, uh, which is a big issue with. Uh, one of our clients where they are they are doing a lot of uh, transactions transferring amounts from one bank account to the other within a group setting uh, which is essentially intercompany and uh, like I mentioned we're able we are able to create the one leg in the in the company where the bank uh, that's associated to the bank account but what they want is for us somehow to be able to create the other leg in the other company. I think you had said that maybe you could follow you you would uh, follow up for me to yeah. find out whether it's on the roadmap or there is some way that I we can be able to do that. Because Sorry. If, uh, we're talking high volumes and they don't want to manually do it. Okay, so the other leg um, is it go also going into uh, to say company two? Is it also going into company two's bank account? Yes. Okay, so from company one's bank account to um, company two bank account. Yeah, I did put it there. Um, I haven't got feedback yet. Uh, I will push. I will push again to find out whether they, uh, they, it is on the roadmap. The other thing is what we can do is, um, I think maybe if you can just drop me a mail uh, and then maybe we can put it on idea um, on, on, on idea scope if it's not on the roadmap so that it can be added on. And if it cannot be added on, let's find out what can we do since you're saying it's high volumes, what can be done in the interim? Maybe um, have an entry point or something uh that we that can be utilized to achieve that is 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 there is it something that i could work on with someone from from your side yes it's something that you can do you have you logged this as an issue is it something that is already uh on our circles or you just raised it in that meeting and i took it up um 
I, I think I, I have raised, I might have raised it with, with, with other issues, uh, but not, 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 se not separately. Okay. All right. Yeah. If, if you can give me uh, more context to it, then we can uh, support whatever the inquiry that I had made, and then we can take it further, and then let's get a position that we can actually go back to the customer with. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. I thanks. think. Sorry. Can I just ask another question? I think uh, we had an issue with the FNB CSV. I think mm. that one is a logged issue that um, Richard might be able to 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 speak to, where we had issue with the header screen and, you know, initially from page twenty three to twenty four, we patched up that same client with that requirement and then. Uh, I think suddenly when we went to page 24, the CSV was not automatically importing and the the FNB underscore ASCE file, mm -hmm. it only had the, the line details. Uh, there was nothing else that was mapped on that CSV format. So I don't know whether it's something that has now been improved so that it can pick up the other details like the MT940. Yeah. Um... It should actually pick up everything. If, if okay, I don't, I don't want to comment specifically on the log because I don't know what uh, or at what stage it is. But it should actually uh, pick whatever because if you look at the file formats uh, the, on the setup, you now have the header, uh, the detail, and the and the total. So based on that, it should actually be able to to pick whatever you have uh, entered in those three sections. On, so, on what page level? Uh, this is um, this is page twenty six. Uh, sorry, page, page oh, okay. two, from page, page twenty six. No, from page twenty five. You page them up to page what? No, it was on twenty four where it dropped the. Okay. It, it seemed like you could you could import previously, but after patching to twenty four, you couldn't um, import successfully. Then they had to revert to the MT nine forty. Okay. Yeah. Um. What I'm talking about here, if I can just, uh, I'm talking about, I'm referring to this. Um, sorry, if I can just go quickly. Um, So this is what I'm referring to, that you've got your header, detail, and total. And okay. because of this setup, the, uh, it should actually be able to, to pick whatever is on the FNB header, the detail, and the total. It, this, it shouldn't leave, because if I update, uh, whatever I update, if I change at the header level and put it to fixed, for example, then it's going to change also the, uh, the detail and the total. Yeah, so uh, I'll, we will have to check with Richard uh, what's happening there with that um, uh, with, with with that case, uh, and then maybe advise accordingly. Yeah, I, I can I can confirm that on the total there was nothing mapped. I think it was mostly the the detail, unless it's because of the format type. Yeah, maybe it could be it could be that. Um, oh. Okay, but unfortunately, Richard is not in on this call, so you won't be able to answer. No, it's uh, fine. Uh, okay. Yeah, it, it, it's okay. Um, I, I just don't have a page 26, but if what I see now, I can confirm that that section didn't seem to be mapped. Is it? Okay. This looks this, this looks fine. Thank you. All right, thanks. Okay, uh, do we have another question? Okay. All right. So we just in conclusion. Um, in conclusion, if you have got some questions, feel free to um, to post them in the chat. If the chat is closed, then um, feel free to to reach us uh, on other. Uh, using all our various uh, options, you can send us a mail or you can write in the questionnaire that we are just going to post in the, cha uh, in the chat uh, at the end of this presentation. So in conclusion, basically, 
what we're looking at uh, uh, to summarize is basically the inbound bank file processing. And then in the inbound bank file processing, we are aiming to have user definable inbound bank file formats, improve the input processes, reconciliation with uh, open items and payments, and also automatic posting and matching, and then bridge the classic bank reconciliation. So this is something that you will be seeing in the upcoming uh, versions. And also, again, to reiterate the three co components that we are focusing on, which is the bank file format designer, the bank um, reconciliations, the automatic transaction posting and matching, and then if you if we are to expand expand on those three, basically we will look at there will be the bank uh, the bank the bank feeds uh, integration, the import functionality improve on uh, keep on improving on the import functionality, and then on the matching basically automatic matching with open items and payments, and then also taking account in uh, variances and manual adjustments, and then posting and matching, and then also. To actually uh, make it easy to, for for the reconciliation, uh, uh, the reconciliation to integrate and to post with the general ledger. So those are some of the things that uh, you will see in the coming versions, where the direction where uh, uh, the cash book is going to evolve towards. So with that said, um, I just want to. Thank you for taking your time to join us for this um, presentation where we are looking at the enhancement on the bank statement, um, bank statement enhancements, and also um, some of the things that surrounding the cash book uh, module and where it is going versus the add-on module that was there. Uh, as you can see that most of the functionality that was on the add-on is now uh, being integrated into the core. And hopefully with um, uh, come the end of the year, most all, all functionality would actually be in the core module. All right. Um, with that said, please take care and stay safe. And hopefully uh, we will meet again in the next presentation. Um, I will, if you can just take some time to answer our survey that I'm just going to post in the chat. We want to hear from you um, and your feedback is important to us that's where we take exactly what you want to, uh, to have a look at and then we'll work on that um, please take care and also i want to thank my colleagues nkume and alfred for assisting in this presentation thank you and have a good day thank you bye